Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? It's Eddie Johnson here. This is episode three of season two. Um, this one is going to be called I Forgive You. Um, I'm sure all of us have... You know, forgiveness is something that we have all had to encounter, whether it was us needing to forgive someone else or maybe we needed to be forgiven for something. Um, you know, I guess because a lot of times it's kind of hard to really kind of humble ourselves to the, to the point where we need to both ways where it's, it's hard for us to humble ourselves to ask for forgiveness and also to, you know, seek to give forgiveness to someone else that may have wronged us. Um, just from a personal, uh, standpoint, I've had something occur where it was someone very close, you know, some family where they had said something to me that I really didn't agree with. And I'm sure everyone listening to this wouldn't agree with it either. Um, And it almost came to the point where I wanted to seek retribution for that, you know, physically. And I had to really look at it and like, you know, who am I? to have these, these ill feelings towards someone that I love, you know, um, regardless of whether the person was actually sorry for what they said, that really doesn't, that really means nothing. Um, because we understand that we are, we are commanded to forgive as believers in Christ. We're we're, we're commanded to give one, because we know that Christ forgave us, you know, someone that would die to give their life to save you from your sins. And, you know, so long as we ask for forgiveness from our sins, uh, he was more than willing to do that. You know, that's, that's the ultimate act of love is giving up your life. You know, greater love hath no man than this for a man to lay down his life for his friend. You know, that's love right there. That's what Jesus did for us. So, um, you know, that's, that's why uh, forgiveness is so crucial. So, you know, I always like to, put some um, scripture in it. So we'll read a few. So this is Ephesians chapter four, verse 32. It says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. So we're supposed to forgive because God in Christ forgave us, right? Mark eleven twenty five says, and whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. So it's almost like, before you come to the Lord, you need to go and resolve this issue with your friend, with your brother, with whoever it is that you feel may have wronged you. And um, we're going to read Matthew six fifteen. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, but if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Um, I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. If we don't if we don't forgive others, God won't forgive us. You know, so again, it's more of like. Who am I to not forgive somebody because the Lord, the the Lord forgave me. So it's, it's like, I can't, you know, if, if the one that was perfect, the one that knew no sin, but became sin for us and took our, our punishment, if he forgave me, who am I? Someone that's really, I'm, I'm no one. Who am I to not offer that same, you know, forgiveness to someone else that has wronged me? So, um, and then also there's a couple more, just two more Matthew 18, 21 and 22. It says, then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me? And I forgive him as many as seven times. Seven is the number of completion. And it says, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. So really that means every single time you are, you are wronged or someone does wrong to you, you are supposed to forgive them. We can't we can't enter into the kingdom. We can't get to heaven having unforgiveness in our hearts. It clearly said in the previous scripture, but if you do not forgive others, neither will your father forgive you. So and you know, again, you how are you gonna make it into the kingdom with have you know, by having unforgiveness in your heart? You know, unforgiveness really is a sin, you know? And then this is the last one. Um it says this is Matthew six, verse fourteen and fifteen. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So, again, it's kind of like, you know, I guess you could think of it. Well, I'm not going to say that, but it's really, you know, re uh, repeating. But that's how important it is. That's that's really how important forgiveness is, because if you don't forgive, your your heavenly father won't forgive you. And for someone that may not be a believer, you know, the, the carnal mind, the flesh, you know, tr trying to make sense of this. It's like, man, how, you know, the, you know, the Bible also says to turn the other cheek. And when you think of that from a physical standpoint, obviously you're not going to let someone beat up on you and you <laughs> just literally turn the other cheek and not do anything. Obviously, you're supposed to protect yourself. But, you know, when it comes to someone doing you wrong and, you know, and, and disrespecting you or whatever, you know, hurting you, hurting your feelings, we have to forgive. Now, that's not to say that we're supposed to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, naive or, um, you know, just stupid in a sense to just let people continuously do things that are going to hurt us, whether they be physical. I mean, physical, come on, you can't like, why would you want to keep on getting beat up physically, but then also emen uh, uh, emotionally and mentally. Um, you know, we, we want to keep ourselves away from that stuff because if something is truly hurting you and, you know, someone is like maybe saying things about you, talking behind your back or just, you know, kind of demeaning your character, demeaning you as a person, you want to stay away from that person, especially if they try to come back in your presence and, you know, be all nice, but they keep on doing the same things. It's like, okay, you know what? I forgive you, but this is where it ends. I'm going to completely separate myself from from you because I don't want to get hurt anymore. You know, I don't want to subject myself to this type of treatment when it's clear that you're not sorry for your actions. Even though I'm, I am forgiving you, I do forgive you. I just, I just don't want to deal with that anymore. And we have to understand that we're going to, that we need to put that away, you know, behind us. Um, it makes me think of, you know, a lot of times, I guess, I mean, I'm, I'm sure this has been happening for a long time, but, I can say this just, you know, speaking for for my generation, you see a lot of a lot of you know well, adults now. We are, we're adults now, but growing up may have had some, um, some 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 differences or some things happen in our families, be it a parent or just a you know a close family member, even a close friend or whatever, someone that you may consider close, as close as family, um, have you know, doing some wrong to you. Say, you know, uh, a parent not being around for you as a child or um, maybe even some type of abuse in, in that regard. Um, you hold on to that and you harbor that into adulthood. And then that has a tendency to bleed into all of your other relationships. And, um, you know, there, I, I remember hearing something where it was like, the the age that you experience trauma, you know, say from someone that has done you harm, um, that's the age you stay at. Even as you get older, mentally and I guess emotionally, that's the age you stay at until you resolve those issues. Until really it comes down to forgiveness. You have to be able to forgive someone to be able to get past that and to move on in your life, to start anew, to start fresh, you know, um, and Truthfully, when we when we allow Christ to be the Lord of our life and really change us through the word, that's really the, the only way to be able to move forward and really have that heart of forgiveness. I mean, again, Christ displayed what forgiveness truly is in its most um, in, in, its, in the rawest form, really. The people that, you know, killed him, that were responsible for killing him, he said, Right before it says, right before he gave up the ghost, or right before he passed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was quiet all the way up until the cross. Even when they was talking crazy to him, beating him, spitting on him, all these things, he was silent. You know, um, it's, you know. And then when he got to the cross, that those were his last words: Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So you can imagine, and I guess it's hard to really fathom that us being human beings is forgive having forgiveness for someone that has done the worst thing possible to you. And when we go to scripture, the scriptures that I just uh, read, there were no conditions to that. It wasn't only forgive 
if they say sorry or only forgive if this or that. It's just straight up forgive, you know? So it means no matter what the person has done, even the most vile thing, and it, it, it's hard for you know the human mind to understand that. You mean to tell me if such and such did this to me or did that or, or if, if they, they raped me or molested me or whatever, I'm supposed to forgive them? I mean, yeah, when we look at scripture, there's there's no that's not in scripture where it says you you don't have to forgive them if they do that to you. It's forgiveness, you know. We we wanna you know, and then there's another scripture, and I, I, I'm thinking of this on the fly right now. There's another scripture, you know, where you treat your you, you treat your enemy well to put um, heaping coals, you know, burning coals on their heads, you know. So it's like, why is this person treating me so nicely after I did all these crazy things to them, you know? And it really does something to them. It really makes them feel the way. But you, you know, on the inside and you moving forward. You're able to move forward and now that weight is lifted off your shoulders like, man, I got that out. You know, I know this is what the Lord expects and what the Lord wants. And now I see why he wants this because it helped me grow forward and it helps me to be able to grow and move into, you know, more of the purpose that God has for me. You know, because how are you going to move forward with unforgiveness and expect to do something for the Lord or expect to, you know, have a fruitful and fulfilling life? with that unforgiveness on your shoulders. You know, that's, that's it, it's very difficult. You could even say it's impossible to do that because you're still living in that place. You know, you're still kind of, in a sense, you're still in bondage to this person and what they've done to you. So you have to move forward. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's sayings that they always say how forgiveness isn't for the other person, it's for you. And that's true. But then I also do believe that it is for the other person as well. Um, we can look at scripture as well in this one too. Um, so this is in this is about Stephen. So um, Stephen was another uh, God fearing man. He says the word says that he was full of the Holy Ghost. Where it says um, full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, right? So that's Stephen. That's in, this is in Acts chapter six, right? So we can go back to the beginning of Acts in Acts chapter one. Um, verse eight. So this was, this is Jesus talking um, to his apostles um, because he's getting ready to, you know, ascend up into heaven again. You know, and and then that's you know, after or before the second coming, he ascends into the, into heaven, right? And um, in verse eight, it says, this is chapter one, verse eight. It says, "But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you." And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. Right. So this is a command that Jesus gives. So if we go to you know, later on in, in, in Acts, in the book of Acts. So there's there's uh, things going on and really they, the word needs to be spread. Again, we just heard. What Jesus said, be witnesses in, in Jerusalem and in Samaria and Judea and into the uttermost parts of the earth. So the gospel is supposed to be preached further than just uh, here in Jerusalem and here in, in Greece and, you know, in all these, you know, these countries in the specific area. Right. The word is supposed to be preached across the earth. So now that the things are starting to happen where, you know, that is, is starting to take place. The word is being preached to more and more people, more people are be, being converted, right? So Stephen, there, you know, there were people in the synagogues. We could think of it today as um, believers coming against another believer, right? They came against Stephen because they felt that um, he was speaking things against uh, the laws of Moses and, you know, stuff like that. And really, they, they, they were false witnesses because, again, we know through Scripture that Stephen was doing exactly what he was supposed to. He was full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. We know that we need the Holy Ghost in order to be able to have, or really be sealed, with, be, be sealed by God, you know. So if we have the Holy Ghost, we know that this is what we're supposed to do, right? So they end up really imprisoning him. And he's, you know, he's testifying to them about the kingdom. And why in that Jesus did come to, he didn't come to destroy the laws of Moses. He came to fulfill the law, 
Jesus Jesus was the new covenant. You know, he created the new covenant. So as as things are progressing, and again he's testifying to all these people, and um, now they you know, at, towards the you know the end of him his, his speech, him speaking. Now they begin to stone him. So in Acts chapter seven, uh, verse we we'll go from verse fifty eight to the end, verse sixty. It says. And cast him, him being Stephen, out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. So remember, just, let's just keep that name, Saul, okay? And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Okay, so that kind of brings flashbacks to what Christ said, at, you know, when he was on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Stephen says, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. So we have Saul, it says, whose name, this young man, whose name was Saul. So Saul ended up becoming the apostle Paul, who wrote, uh, who was responsible for a, a good portion of the New Testament. Even this, the book of Acts. <laughs> this was crazy. So... Really, you know, that's that's another sign of the a heart of forgiveness for people that you are trying to testify to and, and give the word to or help when you really look at it. Um, he's he's really saying, you know, he's really kind of trying to tell, you know, I always like to say telling someone about the Lord or, or about Christ is, you know, is you is really the, the biggest act of love that us as humans can can do because we're telling you this because we know what's to come we understand the consequences of not being a believer in christ um the, it says that the wages of sin is death so when we are not in christ when we are not uh forgiven our, our sins the wages of sin is death so that means we, we would end up in hell if we don't repent and so i like to say a, a parent when they have their child if their child runs out into the street, they're not going to just look the other way. They're going to scream, get out the street, or they're going to run out and go get them. Essentially, that's what it is when we're testifying to anyone about the kingdom of heaven. It's trying to get them out of the way of a truck coming down the street while they're in the middle of the street, right? And so here with, with this situation, so why I said forgiveness is also for the other person. So think of it, you know, if Jesus wouldn't have said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they, they do, Jesus could have said anything. He could have said, Father, destroy them for what they are doing now, you know, but he didn't do that. He died specifically for those people, for us as well, but he died for those people that put him up there, right? And so here you have Stephen um, expressing that same heart of forgiveness, lay not this into their charge. And so... After that, you know, Paul was, or Saul at this time, Saul was getting ready to go and persecute more Christians. Because, again, he was a part of the Pharisees. He was getting ready to go persecute more Christians that believed the things that Stephen and all the other apostles were teaching. And so on his on the on the way to uh, so the road to Damascus, he was going again, he was going to kill the kill more people. This is when Jesus came to him and said, why are you persecuting me? So that was Paul's, uh, Saul's transformation into Paul. So that was him being cleansed and being renewed and being a new person, having a new identity, which was in Christ. So really what I'm saying is that heart of forgiveness that Stephen had, that that was extended to, to Saul, who became Paul. So you never know on that road to Damascus when Jesus was speaking, why are you persecuting me? What if he went back to that time? That specific time when Stephen was being stoned and him saying, Lord, lay not this into their charge. You know, that heart of forgiveness has an effect on whomever it is that is doing something to you. You know, you see somebody doing the worst thing to you and you forgiving them. And they're like, man, that's crazy. Why are they forgiving me? I want to know why. Why are they like this? And then they come to know why you're like that. Because you know who Christ is. You understand that Christ forgave you. So you're extending that same forgiveness to them. You have that same heart of forgiveness to them, for them. And so that's why forgiveness is essential. It's essential on both sides for the one that needs to forgive and for one, the one that needs to be forgiven. 
because after after Saul was converted, after you know he his uh, the road to Damascus experience, after his conversion from Saul to Paul, he went and preached all over the world, really, you know. And again, going back to the beginning in Acts chapter one verse eight, what Jesus said. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So this that forgiveness, you could say you could assent, you could kind of say that that had, that was responsible for the gospel being furthered into the uttermost parts of the earth, because Stephen forgiving Saul, who became Paul. Now Paul is being used mightily by the Lord. You know what I mean? So your your forgiveness is essential because people can come back. To, and, and I just want to also say that it doesn't specifically say that Paul thought of what Stephen did. His, you know, him saying, laying out this into their charge. But that's that's some that's that's definitely a valid point to think about. What if he did think about that? What if those thoughts did come? You know, man, I was persecuting you know all these people, all these believers. And this one said, you know, lay not the sin to their charge. He forgave me for what I was doing, you know. And here it is now. I, I want to be used for the Lord. I want to extend that same heart of forgiveness. I want to give this gospel to others, you know. So that's why forgiveness is such an important thing because it, it, you never know what it can do. What, you know, what someone can be going through when they think about your forgiveness and how it could change them and make them a better person. Again, it's about humbling ourselves and knowing that it's not about us. You know, it's not about our feeling. We can't act off of emotion and off of feeling. We have to act off of truth and off of facts. And everything in this word is facts. You know, we need to forgive because God said to. He forgave us, so we need to forgive others, no matter what the circumstances. And it, yeah, it's hard to come to that, but that's why we ask the Lord for help in that. You know, ask, uh, ask him to show us, you know, why we need to forgive or show us our heart, you know, show us, you know, the things that we needed to be forgiven for so that we can offer that same forgiveness to others, you know, because again, nobody's perfect. You know, there's many things that I've done um, in my life that I know that I needed forgiveness from, you know, things that, that you've done as a kid. And then as you get older, you're like, man, I was bugged out. I, I, <laughs> I need to go and, and ask this person to forgive me. And I've done it before too, you know, um, because again, nobody's perfect. No one, no, you, you'll never find a perfect person. Um, the only way that we can really grow in, into that image of Christ is when we seek Him, when we seek forgiveness from Him, and then He, you know, once when we're open to that, when we have that willingness to learn and to be washed clean, then He can, excuse me, then He can forgive us. You know, um, yeah, this was a, this was actually a. Um, a a lesson inside of a lesson from a church service uh, a couple weeks ago and i just i was just like wow lord like that's that's deep you know our forgiveness or our, us forgiving someone else can help them you know their change you know what i mean because they'll think about the way we treated them the way we forgave them you know the things that they did to us and we still decided to forgive them you know um and I just think that's such an important thing because, you know, we we understand the times that we're in. Um, we definitely are in the the last days. Um, and it's not even just to say looking into the world, really looking at the church because we understand that the, the scripture is about the people of God. You know, the Bible is about the people of God. And we understand the sign of the times as, as when we see how the church looks. Also the world, yes. But the, how the church looks, you know, the church is now looking like it's, it's the church really wants to look like the world. Now, the church really wants to conform to the world. And the Bible says to, you know, be transformed, to be not conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. And, you know, when we see that happening, because in Amos chapter eight, verse 11, it says there's a famine, not of food and water, but of the word. And that is happening now. You could look at many churches now, you know, um. You know, I I just have to say it. You know, there's there's a church I don't remember where, but I know it was um, Bishop Paul Morton, and I'm sure those of us that have kind of grown up in the church, we recognize that that name, and and I'm sure he's not the only one too. It's not just a singer on him, but that's the one that I saw, so I have to speak on it. But 
um, you have to show your 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 um, <laughs> your I'll say it this way, your potion card in order to get into church. And you think about that, like back in, in Jesus' time, Jesus healed the lepers. Jesus healed the sick. He didn't turn them away. Oh, I need to see this and if you want me to preach to you. No, man, you know, and, and that's really, that's a sign of the church trying to conform to the world, you know. And so when we see that happening, we know things is getting crazy. So it's time to get right. And that's why I wanted to bring this to you guys, because we need to get right. We we don't know the day or the hour when the Lord is to return, but it's time to get right today. The scripture, scripture says that today is a day of salvation. So that's why I wanted to uh, give this to you guys, you know, and express this to you guys because times are crucial. We are in the last days um, and we need to really get ourselves together. You know, there's a saying I love, get right before you get left. And that's that couldn't hold more true, you know, than today. So, um, yeah, man, I just wanted to come and and rap with you guys for a little bit. Um, forgiveness is so important, man. Um, we need to really offer that that forgiveness again because Christ forgave us, and we ain't we ain't no good, you know. We've done terrible things. Me personally, I've done some terrible things that I'm even ashamed to even think of, let alone speak of. But you know what I mean. So. You know, we just need to give that, you know, offer that forgiveness to others. You know, whoever it is that you got a problem with, that you may have some beef with, or whatever the case may be, let it go, man. Life is too precious to hold on to that, to be bound to someone's hurt. You know, someone to the hurt that someone has caused you. So give that up. Let God handle it. You know, you ask, you forgive the others. Let God, let it go. You know, let go and let God and. Move forward with life, you know, move forward, grow, grow in the word, grow in the knowledge of Christ, be clean, be washed, understand your purpose here, understand what the Lord has put you on this earth for, you know, there's still time, it ain't too late until it's too late, I've said that plenty of times, you know, so um, yeah man, I just want to um, give that to y'all, I hope it blessed you guys, definitely blessed me, I'm going to go back and listen to this joint now, <laughs> but um yeah, man, listen to us on yoyodepodcast.com. Shout out to Spreaker, the hosting site. You can go on Spreaker.com. We're on all major platforms, iTunes, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, um, Podcast Addicts, all that good stuff. So check us out. Also, YouTube, too. So, yeah, check us out. And, um, yeah, God bless you guys. Yo, yo.